I hope you had a Merry Christmas, I really do. I'm doing a special vlog today and I've come to London to do it and that's for a special reason and I'll let you know that at the end of the vlog. But I'm looking back over 2023 and the highlights of narrow boating this year. So sit back, relax and enjoy the highlights of 2023 whilst we take in the scenes of London. My daughter India gave me this 2023 map of our journey for Christmas. It shows the waterways that we covered and some of the amazing discoveries that we made. I've come here to do the most surprising moment. So where was the most surprising moment of 2023 on the canal? But let's go and have a look at this very special place first. This is Word on the Water, which is a floating bookshop in London on the Regent's Canal. And there's a link between this bookshop or something inside this bookshop and my most surprising moment, narrowboating, in 2023. And then we're hoping to get to somewhere I am really looking forward to. And also it's somewhere where I'm going to meet India. So India is joining us on the boat for a few days. I've not seen her since Christmas. So I'm really excited about that. But as we traveled on that January day, the temperatures really began to plummet. And even though it was our aim to get to Bourneville and Cadbury's world, we had to stop short of that because we were just too cold and we ended up mooring our boat somewhere that we would not normally moor. But because we thought it would only be overnight, we didn't really think too much about it. And I kept thinking, where are all the other boats? I mean, normally there's other boats moored, but there were no boats at all in this area. Once again, we were completely and utterly frozen in, and so we were going to have to make the most of this mooring. So I've got this place wrong. We are quite close, or very close to a nature reserve. There's nothing wrong with those houses over there. And literally, we are a stone's throw away from the Tolkien Trail. India has changed her train station, that was really easy to do. So I'm going to pick her up and we are going to do the Tolkien Trail. But I'm really excited about exploring this place and it's called Shirley, what a lovely name. So we are in Shirley. Are you looking at those haunted houses? So I picked Indy up from the station, we went back to the boat and grabbed our Tolkien trail maps. Then off we went, exploring and learning all about Tolkien and where he grew up as a child and taking in some amazing nature along the way. It was such a surprising find and I'm so pleased that we were frozen into the Middle Earth. So this is Tolkien's childhood playground. Solid, really. Oh, oh, so we ate it at the other end. <laughs> I know. Seth, can you smell the orcs? Oh, dear.
that's all happening at this lock. Boats coming out, boats going in. Normally this is a really heaving gongoozler spot when any boat goes through and whenever I've come through here it's been really nerve-wracking and quite challenging because you want to get the lock done perfectly and you know there's lots of people watching. So I have come here to talk about what my most challenging moment was this year on the narrowboat. Beautiful boat is stock here. Stunning. Birch Hills Junction. This is where we came out when we came off the Warsaw Canal. So where we are going now is going to be New Canal for us. What a gorgeous autumnal scene. Look at the colours. Beautiful. So beautiful. This is when we notice that something must be around the prop, but we've had things around the prop loads of times before, so it shouldn't be a problem. I've come in the boat because engine cut out and there's smoke coming out where the coolant bottle is. It was such a tricky place to have broken down because we couldn't get the boat near to the bank because it was so shallow. But luckily, River Canal Rescue came out very quickly within an hour and they managed to get our engine going temporarily so we could at least get to Oxley Marine, a fantastic place if ever you break your boat because there's Phil, a mechanic who says it as it is, but he knows his way around an engine and he managed to get our boat going. But it costs us three weeks of cruising because we had to wait for parts and in the words of Phil things were not healthy in our engine area it's a mess it's a mess it's a mess really but it's nothing what can't be fixed, fixed. I've got to talk about my most amazing wildlife moment this year while standing here because I am looking at a heron in the middle of Camden. I'm surrounded by starlings and I just am quite gobsmacked by the amount of wildlife here. So what was my most amazing and favourite wildlife moment this year on my narrowboat in 2023? Oh, there's been so many because the thing about narrowboating is it brings you so close to nature. I could have said that my favourite nature moment was in Stourbridge in the evening when I had badgers and foxes and all sorts on my wildlife camera. in Worcester in June when I watched two peregrine falcons rear a family of young peregrine chicks.
I was going to say my favourite moment was seeing the barn owl flying over the pert and hulks at sunset in July on the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal, but there's something much tinier which really captured my heart and when I saw it I just can't explain how it made me feel. come down this evening to a little patch of grass purely because I saw the sign that says glowworm area and here is the patch of grass have you found a glowworm Sergio? have a look someone's intercom service. Spotted one. I think it's time to go to the boat. Darling has just pooped on me. Going on a boat, sir? Can you believe it? with these stairs should we try hi i'm really excited about this we are getting on the london water bus it's going to leave here from camden any minute and take us to little venice for 15 pounds it connects to the grand union canal in little venice where we'll drop you off and that canal goes all the way to birmingham and wales So what has been my favourite cruise of 2023 on Narrowboat Alice Grace? My favourite cruise started off on the Grand Union Canal with a visit to Edith Holden's house where she wrote her famous country diary. Seven. Eleven. So in two hours is time. Six. Number 13. It's this house. This is going bang. It was just like the picture of her house in her biography that I've got. And I can just imagine her coming back from a day wandering around the woods and the forest nearby and writing and recording in her journal in this house. It was so exciting. But this wasn't the actual part of the cruise that was my favourite this year. That was still yet to come. We were then treated to some of the most spectacular sights we have had cruising. Underneath the towering and magnificent Chimney Bridge. So this is called Chimney Bridge. You can see why, can't you? Alongside the M5 motorway, which felt like we were in an additional lane. And 
and through warm, rich and vibrant displays of autumn. And the only boats we saw the whole time were just two working boats. No moored boats, no moving boats. We had had the fortune of having many beautiful cruises across 2023, but something about this cruise on water not often travelled, with a variety of different experiences, just stands out for me as being the best cruise of 2023. It even came with its own bonus blue carpet. We'd come out of Gloucester Docks, we had gone past the Red Lion pub and then where there was the turning off for the old Coombe Hill Canal, we were basically more just alongside from that. Now this would have been the absolutely perfect place to wild moor and at this point we thought it was. But we were unaware there's other factors to consider about the River Severn at this time of year. I've just got out the shower and I've, we've realised that because we keep getting messages from people earlier in the day who've gone past the boat saying about the spring tides and we've just checked and a, a bore is due in about 10, 10, 15 minutes. It's pitch black outside and it's a two star bore which isn't the biggest strength is five. She should allow like 20 minutes on either side of the suggested time it's going to arrive which is at 22.56. We can't really get an exact time on it. We can just see the cow's eyes. Right, Mr M's just gone to bash the pegs down a bit just to make sure they're nice and secure. So there's the pub there, that's the pub lights in the distance. Of course you can't see any water see some moths. What worried me most about this was we were on a wild mooring so we just had pegs and pins. We weren't on a floating pontoon or we didn't have any sort of armco as security. So we had no idea what strength this ball would do in terms of lifting us off our ropes. So it was a matter of just waiting and the waiting in the pitch dark and not knowing was the bit that frightened me the most. Yeah, we've moved away from the plants already. And then when the boar arrived, it lifted the boat. It was pushing us out, but the ropes kept us securely to the bank. And then we rose above the height of the purple loose strife that had once been pressed up against the glass. This spot right here, over the five years that I've been narrowboating, has got to be one of my all-time favourite mooring spots. It's Little Venice. You have to pay to stay here, but it's so worth it. It's beautiful. And in the evening, all the buildings are lit up behind. So it's a great place to talk about what my favourite mooring spot has been in 2023. We had an isolated mooring spot tucked in the reeds where we could listen to the warblers and there were many butterflies out, there was the cuckoo flower flowering and it made me really excited that perhaps we might hear a cuckoo although on the Droitwich that year there was a sad reporting that the cuckoos hadn't yet returned but something magical happened at that mooring spot.
We've heard the cuckoo, Zeph. What do you think? We've heard the cuckoo. Is it great news? It's great news, Zeph. So what has been my most heartwarming moment this year? Something that's made me go, oh, that's lovely. So behind me is the fish viewing gallery and I've got a ticket for 11.20. So I'm gonna go back and have a look at these amazing mayfish. A mayfish is a twait shad and they're called mayfish because that is when they used to historically come in their hundreds and thousands upstream into the River Severn to spawn. But when the building of the weirs came along to make it easier for boats to navigate, they didn't realise they were making it extremely difficult for the fish to navigate. But a £20 million project launched by the Canal and River Trust is beginning to make a real difference. The story in itself is heartwarming, but when I went underneath the fish pass, something happened that was even more so and it made me realise how important it is for us as human beings to see animals thriving in their natural habitat. started wowing and gasping it just surged my heart with happiness it really did because we're all strangers there and we're having the same reaction and it was just beautiful a magical moment this year on Narrowboat Alice Grace. Spain pen. Oh my goodness. Let's see if dogs are allowed in first. Hello. Hi, are dogs allowed in? Well, I'll let your lovely dog in. Oh, thank you. Hello. Can you come in? Is it a boy? <laughs> it's a girl. It's a Hello. girl. This was a magical moment because Beatrix Potter's shop was not only beautiful, and also told the story of the place that inspired her book, The Tailor of Gloucester. But when I went to the bottom of the shop, I discovered the Tailor of Gloucester myself. It was almost like he jumped out of the book and he was at the back of the shop. It was magic. Lived. That's right. Is that right? I oh. think the, um, the lady showed me the book. Didn't you yes, that? yes. Do you mind the dog? No, no, no. no. Hello. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> she does, yeah. I, I, say, I tell the story and I say, yeah. you, you know, the tailor went home and went to bed. Yes. For my sake. Oh, and when they're making the cut. I'm going to have to buy Zephyr a tree because she thinks this is. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a book, Zeph. I'll show you. I'll show you what we've bought. Look. We've bought the Tailor of Gloucester. If you're ever in Gloucester and you want to feel like you've stepped inside a storybook, then I really recommend going into the Beatrix Potter shop and meeting the Tailor of Gloucester himself at the back in his little kitchen. to rejuvenate it started and this is what I love about traveling the waterways you find out so much about its history 
So this year there's something that really stands out as a significant moment for me in admiring and appreciating the history of other waterway. So what is it? I can completely see now why other boaters have said you have to stop here. We're at Purton Hulks where you can get up close to ships over 100 years old. 80 of them lie here filled with silt and sunken into the banks to protect the land from erosion. There's an eerie beauty here made even more special by the story plaques which outline each boat's history as you walk along. And then you can see the remains of two tankers which one night hit the old railway bridge causing a huge fire and five men lost their lives and there's a plaque to commemorate that moment. Now this is the place I wanted to end my vlog this week. Every place that's had a link to Edith Holden on our travels this year, I've tried to go and explore it and find out more about it. But sadly, this is the spot in this area where Edith lost her life. She was picking blossoms from a chestnut tree and she slipped and she fell into the River Thames. So I wanted to mark my respect for her basically by sprinkling some sunflower seeds. Now there aren't any birds around now, it's too late, they're all sleeping, but hopefully they'll come and find them in the morning. And who knows, maybe with some luck a sunflower or two might grow here. So this is my way of commemorating a wonderful artist, a wonderful naturalist, and someone who's inspired me, and who inspired our travels this year on Narrowboat Alice Grace. Behind the bustling city and the hustle rush of town, there's a labyrinth of liquid, sometimes clear, but mostly brown. A wilderness of water with a towpath of her lows. Birdsong bursts the hedges by its history that flows. It's a cutting cut away from the rules and roads and rail where the locks of yesterday and its rope marks still prevail. Canal towels long ago float up and down each arm, pounds and pounds of slow gone goozled for its charm. And every week I've lived there in my narrow home of still, with fish beneath the flooring as the outside inside spills, the hammering of beaks on weeds stuck to the hole, not one of all those weeks speaks to me of something dull.